Hey guys, Georgia Soundtracks here, and this week we're going to show you how to install the new Tsunami 2 TSU BH1 sound value upgrade decoder into this Bachman sound value F unit. Now, this BH1 is a drop in decoder that is designed to upgrade your sound value decoder as a wire for wire replacement. So, as you can see the decoder here, you can see that the wires are all going to be lined up with exactly where they are inside the sound value unit inside your model. Now the TSU BH1 is available in EMD, GE, and ALCO, and available at retailers now. MSRP is $115.95. So let's head up to the workbench and we'll get started on installing the decoder into this F unit. Okay guys, here we are at the workbench and we're gonna go ahead and remove the shell off of this F unit here. So to do that, we're just gonna grab a Phillips head screwdriver and underneath here, there's four holes that you can see right there. And this is where these four screws live inside the model. So we're going to take these four screws out. And what we're going to do then is you're going to have to manipulate this around. You can get this coupler. Uh, you can either take it out or you can move the body shell around to, to take it off without having to remove the coupler. So that's the method I'm going to do. So I'm going to remove these four screws all the way out. And we'll be right back with the shell off. Okay, now that I've got my body shell off, now we want to go through here and we want to identify the track pickups. Now in this particular model, this is a sound ready version. So you will see that there's the front and rear headlight on the front and back. Now, of course, this being an F unit, there is no rear light. Um, then we have our motor leads here, our left and right track pickup leads on the front. And you're gonna notice that they're actually gonna orient. So you have your left and right front track pickups. Here's your speaker terminals, and then you have extra lights here. So if you want to add any lights to it, like a Mars light or anything like that, you've got your FX5 and 6. Um, and then back here, you have your uh, backup light, your motor leads, your track pickup, and then you have some of the other lights located throughout the models. Now on the back of the decoder here, you have your backup light and your V-common, you have your motor plus and minus, and then your right and left track pickup. So again, everything's designed to orient there, so you don't have to add any extra wire to extend to any other locations. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify these wires. Now you can do this one at a time where you take the, the little black plastic cap off of here and then attach it to the wire one at a time, or you can just go through and do it really quickly. Um, these are pre-regulated for LEDs, so these lights for your wires for your headlight and backup light will wire direct to the decoder. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you here. Let me grab a screwdriver. Okay, so basically to remove these black plastic track pickup leads here, we're just going to take a screwdriver and you can kind of shove on a little bit and you can see how that's kind of coming loose. Now you can get a pair of tweezers or a pair of pliers or something to reach in here and grab these guys and then move it out of the way. So then this is where your track lead is going to be. So we're going to go ahead and work our way through and then we're going to attach them to each of these terminals. The right rail, left rail, we got our front headlight and V-common and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera. I'm going to do that and we'll be right back and I'll show you the finished product. Now, before I get too far into this, I did forget to tell you that this decoder or circuit board in this case is screwed down in place with two screws. So you have one in the front, one in the rear. So all we need to do is simply take our screwdriver and we can unscrew the wire, the screw here. Now these screws we are going to reuse, our decoder will use those screws to mount right back in the same place. So we can do this again here on the rear. We're going to take our screws and set them aside and then our circuit board is loose so we can finish removing the wires and then attaching them to the BH1 and then we'll use the screws to mount the decoder in place. So again I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Now after you have your circuit board out in this particular model we can see the orange and gray wires for our motor, red and black wires for our rear track pickup, then we have red and black for our front track pickup and then another pair of red and black for our headlight. So this will be a fairly quick and easy installation, but one thing I do want to recommend is that you do your soldering. And we recommend that you solder to the circuit board. So what that entails is that when you have these wires here, we want you to tin the end of the wires because what that's going to do is that's going to make a good solid connection. Now for you guys asking, this is a flux made by a company called Chipquick. 
SMD 291 and it comes in a syringe. I've had this for over a year and a half now, maybe two years, and I'm only halfway through it. Um, but this is a good one at home. It sells on digikey.com and it's about $12 for the syringe. And this is really good stuff because it's designed for work on circuit boards. You always wanna make sure you do not use a flux that's not designed for work with circuit boards. So now while my soldering iron's getting ready, I'm gonna go ahead and put some flux on each of these wire leads so that we can tin the ends of these wires and be ready to go with our installation here. So we can go in and make sure. Now in some cases when you do this, you'll wanna retwist the wires, make sure there aren't any frayed wires coming out of any of these. And when you're tinning the end of the wire, don't worry too much about how much wire is exposed. Um, of course, you're don't, you don't wanna have a, too much wire but we can always trim it before we solder to the circuit board. So again, I've got some solder on the end of my iron with the flux on the end. We just simply touch it to the wire and the flux draws the, 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 flux draws the solder into the, uh, into the wire. And we'll simply just pull it in like that. Now we have a nice, good, clean connection. We're gonna do this to the other side. A little bit more on that one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, tinning the ends of these other wires and I'll be right back. Okay, now that all of our leads are tinned, we can go ahead and put our decoder in place. Now, one thing I do wanna point out here that these wires are kind of formed in such a way that they cross each other. You wanna make sure that your red and black on the front and rear of the decoder are matched. So you can see that this one's crossed over as well and the red one goes to the other side. So we wanna make sure that you just be consistent throughout. So also when we're doing this, we wanna make sure that we have our leads ready to go and make sure that they match the space. So you can solder them too before you put the circuit board in place, you can do, or you can do it after. But when we talked about tinning the end of the wire, here you can kind of see that we have a, a little bit of a long lead and we don't necessarily need anything that long. So you can go in with a pair of cutters and just cut those leads a little shorter so that that way you don't have all that exposed wire inside your model. Uh, any exposed wire is a potential hazard for issues, uh, whether it touches the circuit board or it touches something else, uh, either another wire or the frame or something like that. And so every time you have exposed wire, um, that's asking for problems. So I always recommend you trim those back as much as you can. Now in this particular case, the angle of the wires, we can actually come in from the underside. So this is where pre-tinning your leads are gonna come in handy. So we can go ahead and put these wires into place beforehand. And now we have our two front track leads. So we're gonna put a little bit of more flux on here on the joint. Now we're gonna grab our soldering iron. There's one. And there's two. So now we can do the same thing for our motor leads. So again, you wanna pay attention to M minus and M plus. So the orange wire, we want to go to the M plus so that we, our locomotive moves forward in the forward direction of the throttle. All right, so we're in. Put a little flux on there. And you don't need a whole lot of flux, just a little bit. But you can always clean it up afterward with a uh, rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. All right, there's one. And there's two. Now in this particular case, I didn't trim the ends of the wires, opting to show you afterwards. So you can also come in here and trim them off extra uh, after you've soldered to the circuit board. Just make sure that you don't go with cutting into the actual solder joint. So next up, we're gonna do our back wires, our back track. And remember, we crossed red and black on the front, so we're gonna do that again here on the back. So our left rear and our right rear wires. So 
So yeah, and we're going to take our flux. Hang on just a second. Okay. We're going to take our flux, just put a little bit on here, and that's the advantage to the syringe type is because they're just simply allows you more control when you're making these, uh, when you're applying flux to the joint. So now we'll put a little bit of solder here. So there's one. Okay. And now the only thing left is our headlight. Now, when you're doing LEDs, LEDs are polarity sensitive, so you always want to double check and make sure. Now, one thing I have here on my work table is this little LED tester. I've showed you guys this before. It's a nine volt battery. You can take a connector that you can get at any rate, any uh, electronic supply store and just splice a thousand ohm resistor in line with it. And then you can get these alligator clips to put it on the end. But we're going to go ahead and test to make sure that the polarity is correct on this. So we're going to take our black wire and touch the black wire for our LED. The red wire to touch the red wire for our LED. And let's see. There we go. And our LED is illuminated. So we do have proper polarity. So we're going to go ahead and take that out. And put our tester away. And now we're going to solder these wires. So our red wire will go to the V+. Plus. Now remember these are pre-regulated for LEDs, so there's no need to add any resistors here on the BH1 decoder. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing on the black wire, but now that it got bent, we're going to straighten it up. All right, now we're going to put this through here. And put our flux on the joint. Okay, and there's one. And there's two. So now this decoder is more or less installed. Now, of course, we have not done the speaker yet, and we're going to do that next. So we could take this decoder right now and kind of hover it above, and we can test it out, make sure everything works. Um, but in the essence of knowing this works, and having done this already, we're going to go ahead and tighten it down. So we're going to go ahead and line these screws up and grab our screws that we removed on the circuit board here. Grab our screwdriver. Go ahead and screw it and mount it in place. All right, now this is where you want to take some of these wires here that are kind of loose and just kind of tuck them away, make sure they're where they need to go. And you can do the same thing on the back here if you choose. Now the back here is where we're going to put our speaker. So let's get our speaker and we're going to get started on putting that in. Okay, here we are now. We've got our 810-153 28 millimeter round speaker. We've got purple wire, and Soundtrack sells that. Um, I believe it's 810-145. And we have our uh, baffle kit. Now I've just taken the end cap and one ring, and these are gonna snap together. Now you can put a dab of, of uh, plastic cement along here if you so choose, but what I've done is I've taken it out of the sprue and just kind of sanded it down a little bit to be smooth all the way around. So our speaker will snap right into here, and we're going to show you how to do that. But first, we have to solder the wires onto the end. So in this case, I've just got two pieces about three to four inches because we're going to mount this inside the body shell. So you just need enough to be able to access. So we're going to take our wire strippers and we're going to strip off a little bit of the end of the wire. And we're going to tin the end of the wire again, just like we did with our decoder wires. So in this case, since they're loose pieces, we can just spin the wire in our fingers, let the wires twist up. Put a little bit of flux on the ends here. And we're going to grab some solder. We're going to tin the ends. Now, on the speaker, 
we're going to go ahead and solder to these pin, pads. Now the one thing I want to point out is on the middle here, these are the pads that actually have the wires going to the voice coil. So you don't want to solder to these, you want to solder these outer two pads out here. So we're going to put a little bit of flux on the outside edges. Alright, now that we have that in place, now one of the biggest challenges when we're soldering to speakers is the magnet. Now the magnet can, as you would imagine, be attracted to any type of non-magnetic metal, including the tip of our soldering iron. So to help minimize that, we're just going to take a pair of our cutters, we're going to rest it over the magnet, so that that way this handle will help hold the speaker down, so when we pull our soldering iron away, it holds the speaker in place. So now we're going to grab our soldering iron, we're going to grab our first wire. Now again, you want to trim the end of the wire to be short so that you don't have a whole bunch of exposed wire all over the place, and I've already done that. So in this case, apply the solder, and there's one wire. And now we're going to do the second wire. And just like that, soldering's done. So now on our baffle, there's two holes right here that we're going to thread the wires up and through. And in this particular case, uh, you're using one speaker, so polarity of the speaker really doesn't matter all that much. Um, so ultimately, just put it together and, and uh, wire it in place. So now that we've got our speaker ready to go, when you're snapping it into the baffle, don't push on the voice coil. What you want to do is set the speaker onto the flat surface and then that way let the surface press the edge of the speaker and then now we're just going to press down on our baffle and snap it into place. And so now you can see that baffle is perfectly in, our speaker's installed, we're ready to put it inside the model. So the way we do this particular one is we actually install it with some double stick tape up here on the top inside of the body shell. And the reason for that is because there's not quite enough room here with these castings and so forth built onto this uh, platform. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it to the top of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some double stick foam tape and this is just a roll of double stick tape you can get at the local Walmart. We're just gonna cut a little piece off, a little square. Doesn't need to be too much. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to adhere this to the back of the speaker. Now you can put a couple of pieces here if you like. Um, I think I'm going to do that because I believe there's a little bit of extra space there. With the curvature of the roof line anyway. Alright, so now that we have our tape doubled up, now we're just going to be very careful. We're going to put this inside here. And let the tape hold it to the body shell. Now again, make sure that you're not pressing on the speaker cone when you're doing the installation. And then the last thing is we want to make sure that our wires are long enough to get to where they need to go so we can open the body shell if we need to for servicing later on. Okay, so in the last edit we were attaching the wires to the speaker. Well, once I got lined up here, I realized my speaker leads were not long enough because the speaker terminals are here at the front of the decoder. So I had to go back in and get more wire. Well, I realized I'm out of purple wire. So I need to go to soundtracks.com and get more purple wire. But in the essence, to get this video completed, I changed the wires out with some gray and red that I had laying around. Um, ultimately, the color of the wire isn't imperative, but for ease of understanding and being able to go back and do troubleshooting, it's always best to have the right colors on hand. But anyway, so now to finish this up, we're just going to attach the speaker terminal wires. So I'll put a little dab of flux on the S plus and S minus. Now I've already tinned the ends of these wires, so they are going to be quick and ready to go. So we can just take the wires here and attached to the S plus and S minus. And again, you want to shorten the leads to make sure you have the minimum amount of exposed wire uh, sticking through the circuit board, especially at this angle. Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. We have all of our wires soldered. So now the only thing left is to put the body shell on and take it downstairs and test it out. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, here we are with our Bachman F unit look on the track. Let's power it up right now and let's hear it fire up. Well, we've got sound, so that's a good start. We have control of that nice loud air horn and you can see that our headlight is on as well. So we'll start moving in the forward direction. And you can see that the locomotive's moving forward. Let's move in reverse. And it looks like we've got a little bit of a hiccup in there, so the good news is we have some controls with our Tsunami 2 that will help allow smooth that out. So first off, we're going to start with CV211, and we're going to set that to 255, and what this is, is this is slow speed compensation, and what it does is it helps overcompensate and take different measurements of a locomotive's motor control at slower speeds. Uh, the next one we're going to take is CV215, which is a back back emf reference voltage and we're going to take that and reduce that down to a value of 120 to represent 12.0 volts so let's take a look at it all right so as you can see we've got our lights we've got everything on we're going to go ahead and move forward test it out you see that we're moving forward now we'll change directions you can see the light go out we'll go ahead and move in reverse and you can see that we've got control of our decoder and the audio is nice and loud with that 28 millimeter round speaker and a 2 watt amplifier. So guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. Now take this process and install to upgrade your sound value Bachman decoders with our new BH1. The installation process is going to be very similar. So the biggest thing you will need to pay attention to though is make sure that you match your speaker to your decoder specifications. So in some cases uh, you may see a one watt speaker and that potentially can overdrive it. Now you can reduce the volume quickly but we do encourage you to get a speaker installed in there that will match the power of the Tsunami 2. So guys, hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out, out to us at support at soundtracks.com. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.